So welcome everybody and uh, what a what a great talk from Gigi. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, shared themes across these across these two talks. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get going and, and see what happens. Hopefully everyone can hear me uh, loud and clear and uh, and you enjoy the presentation. So today's talk is going to be about uh, Bitcoin as a startup and how it's grown uh, you know from a seed company, into now a store of value currently in its series B phase of life. And we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a few short clicks. So uh, today's talk, I'll uh, first uh, give a couple of disclaimers. Then I'll talk about the Bitcoin company, the circle of price, uh, the different fundraising rounds that Bitcoin has experienced. And uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys with a bit of a investment uh, decision question uh, whether to invest in Bitcoin, the startup company, or Bitcoin startups, or uh, or both. So, as a disclaimer, first things first, these need to be made. So, uh, uh, the target audience for this talk are VCs that are used to valuing uh, startup businesses. So, if uh, someone is used to you know just valuing startup businesses, maybe we should present Bitcoin to them as a startup. Uh, so they can possibly apply their valuation lens uh, in that way. So to start off, the Bitcoin company. So the founder of the company is Satoshi Nakamoto. The CEO, CTO, CFO, C everything O is uh, simply the invisible hand of the market. Uh, the the company's pitch deck is uh, is the white paper. Uh, Anyone is uh, is free to invest, uh, other either you know financially by buying Bitcoin or investing you know in kind by uh, becoming uh, a developer and and growing their slice of the pie. We'll talk about uh, uh, slices of pie and growing and, and number go up uh, shortly. Uh, the main product that uh, that Bitcoin uh, uh, provides is effectively an all encompassing parallel monetary system. Uh, the vision, and this is uh, plucked straight from the white paper, is to allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. And uh, the mission of Bitcoin is the solution of the double spending problem uh, using a peer-to-peer -peer network. So an organization is defined as an organized group of people with a particular purpose. Uh, Bitcoin is effectively that, but it's just an unorganized group of people. So uh, if you want to get into the, 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 the thick of it, you could almost uh, call Bitcoin a, a well-oiled unorganization uh, with founders, uh, but no CEOs, many volunteers, but no employees, and uh, provably non-diluting equity uh, available to, to anyone that's willing to work for it. So Bitcoin, like other companies, has a, has a, a, a suite of products uh, and, and utilities. So let's compare it to another behemoth like uh, Google, for example. So Google started off you know, in the, in the garage in the mid-90s as a search company. And it had you know, little bits of added on products which provided uh, uh, utility. And now you've gone from simple search to an ads behemoth with you know, Google Maps, Google Flights, uh, YouTube, all of these other other stuff, and uh, as as time went on, Google's utility increased as a company. So, what are Bitcoin's main product offerings? There's effectively six basic offerings. Offering number one, and the most important of the offerings, is as uh, Gigi was talking about NGU technology. That's probably uh, uh, for investors one of the one of the bits of the product that's most interesting to them. You have a buying and selling function. You have a sending and receiving function, storage of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin privacy, and uh, the programmability of it. And you'll see each of these products in the product suite uh, has been uh, improved over time uh, with increasing utility. So, for example, in the very, very early stages uh, uh, of Bitcoin, in uh, you know, in the in the pre-C stage, in 2009, for example, uh, buying and selling was was not an option. Uh, there was nowhere you could buy it. There was nowhere you can sell it uh, until uh, Laszlo gave Bitcoin its first value through through the through the purchasing of pizzas in uh, 2010. So, what are the corporate dynamics of the Bitcoin company? So, 
the staff or rather the volunteers uh, work how they like, when they like, where they like, and on what they like. And uh, and for a solid decade of of Bitcoin's life, uh, what the staff liked, uh, basically nobody else in the world liked or found interesting. There were really uh, little uh, uh, itches that one particular person wanted scratched. Uh, so they went off and uh, and worked on that without too much consideration, uh, you know, for for mass market uh, appeal. Uh, these staff are responsible for their own expenses and their own product development budgets. Uh, they can uh, compete uh, 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 with each other, or they can cooperate uh, through the through the open source uh, uh, system. Uh, but there are no central managers or coordinators, and uh, the competition is unholy with uh, with uh, uh, paid products especially having very short uh, shelf lives so the circle of price and that also goes back to to the staff needing to pay for their own development costs so how does the circle of price work and and we go back into the circular loops uh, that uh, that gigi was was talking about in his talk a little earlier so you have your early hodlers sell, or let's call them the staff or early equity holders in the startup. So you could almost say, you know, Satoshi is no different to, you know, to say Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey, you know, holding a, a good chunk of equity in a startup company that they founded. Uh, in this case, you know, Satoshi uh, is uh, is alleged to have a million coins or rather 5% of the equity in the Bitcoin company. So. Uh, and, you know, there were several uh, uh, others like him in the early days mining as well. Now, these people sell when when you have a price spike, they get money in, uh, they retire and they switch to work on Bitcoin uh, full time, whether that's developing, evangelizing, start up, uh, starting up companies, uh, whatever it is, they develop and grow the utility of Bitcoin. When the utility of Bitcoin increases, uh, customers or people uh, uh, flock to use uh, the the improved uh, range of products, whether that's uh, number going up, uh, attracting them, or uh, getting uh, uh, privacy technology uh, that they that they really needed. Once the utility increases, the cash comes in. When the cash comes in, the price increases. When the price increases, the early holders sell. They then go on to develop, and the number go up loop is set almost in perpetual motion. In, a, in an unstoppable way. And, uh, and number just keeps going up, uh, uh, whether that's a price metric, a hash rate metric, a user's metric. Uh, the NGU loop is designed to be triggered when it goes from zero to N and, uh, and never stop. So once the, once the, the NGU is, is used as a as sort of a, a throwaway line and joke and comment, uh, but once a number go up as a concept is, is understood, uh, you'll find that that's a, uh, uh, one of uh, Bitcoin's most most powerful properties. So let's walk through the investment rounds of, of Bitcoin's life. So we've so far gone through three investment rounds from the from the pre-seed phase, the seed phase, and Series A, and we've now just entered Series B uh, in uh, in uh, in what I've evaluated as as Bitcoin's product life. So in terms of a startup, we are still very very early uh, in Bitcoin's uh, uh, life. And for it to be, you know, IPO level or you know, sort of investment grade, uh, we're still we're still a, a good uh, eight to twelve years away from that point. So uh, let's walk let's walk through the the, the little life episodes in uh, in Bitcoin's history so far. So the first the first phase, the precede phase. Uh, this stage in a in a traditional company uh, typically refers to the to the to the very very start. Founders opening a, a startup in the garage, uh, scraping together whatever money they have, uh, money from parents, money from relatives, money from friends, and uh, and using that to, to to really do it rough and uh, and uh, bootstrap the company and and get its early build going. So during this phase, the the risk profile was uh, was extreme. Uh, prices could fluctuate by you know well over fifty percent uh, over up or down. Over the over the period uh, of as little as a week, the block reward and inflation were were extremely high. Inflation was technically infinite because uh, the the base was uh, was growing from zero. Uh, it was it was worthless uh, to start with. 
uh, $40 million went in. So by cash in, uh, I've, uh, I've used that metric as uh, the, the total revenue in US dollars marked to market that the, that the miners earned for their rewards, which is the, the block subsidy, which at the time was 50 Bitcoin per block and, uh, and any fees uh, earned. Uh, price started at nothing. There was a huge spike uh, up to $35, uh, about two thirds of the way uh, 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 into, the, into the round. And you could probably call that the seed money uh, going in. That money was drawn down uh, and then reinvested uh, into development to grow the ecosystem. So after that 40 million went in, we ended the series at a post money valuation of a billion dollars. So uh, uh, th th these were the these were the early pioneers uh, risking risking everything. The the chance of of Bitcoin going to zero was uh, was far far higher than the chance of Bitcoin succeeding even. So this was uh, was still a still a dream, and uh, basically the the equity holders of this business were were the founders, the earliest developers, speculators. And uh, anyone in the in the right place at the right time. This really was a, a diamond in the rough, and you uh, and you sort of had to be lucky to get in this 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 early. So in the pre-seed round, 09 to 2012, uh, if if you're in this round, there's uh, there's there's great privilege and responsibility uh, for these equity holders. Uh, and uh, as I've noted, the user experience and interface during this phase. Uh, was was absolutely terrible, and uh, and for even uh, people that were were interested in it, uh, it was really effectively unusable unless you were a computer science buff. Uh, you had a couple of exchanges uh, uh, get launched and and, uh, and uh, get hacked, uh, but with time things uh, things did improve. So let's have a look at the next round, which was the seed round, uh, which was effectively the first uh, mainstream uh, round. Uh, uh, with uh, with the 2013 bubble being the first real bubble uh, that made it onto onto TV, so you can uh, you can think of this round as uh, the as uh, as Nathan Reef would say uh, the funding required for, for for the seed to plant the tree, and you give this tree enough care and water and attention and sunlight, and hopefully this seed will eventually grow into a tree. So. Uh, uh, during this round, we we did see uh, Bitcoin blossom into a, a nice little robust uh, tree with a with a with a thickening uh, a trunk. So risk here was still quite high. Uh, as you can see, inflation did uh, did drop uh, by half, uh, and uh, the valuation grew from one billion dollars to eleven billion dollars, uh, with post money valuation effectively being the market cap of Bitcoin uh, at the end. Uh, of the of the round, with miners earning 4.6 billion in revenue uh, during the duration. Uh, as you can see, the the prices went spanned from $12 to $1,100, uh, with the ending price being $650, uh, with the hash rate growing unbelievably and tremendously, uh, due to the start of what we saw in the seed round as the age of ASIC miners. So. Uh, here, the risk of failure was still uh, extremely high. The earliest developers and speculators were still the main equity holders, but now with a with a reduced stake. Uh, uh, the the age of you know panning for gold was over. There's no more mining on on CPUs and laptops. There's you know you couldn't open open up a laptop, install a wallet, and be rewarded with fifty Bitcoin anymore. Those days uh, were long gone. Uh, the first hardware wallets became available. Uh, but the the user interface and experience was still terrible, still very hard, to, still very hard to buy Bitcoin, still very hard uh, to to store it, uh, still very hard to really do anything on it. So people investing here were legitimately investing in a in a seed round equivalent product that wasn't quite ready for prime time. Series A, which uh, which we've just come out of, uh, a very busy uh, uh, series. So in the first eight years of uh, of life, Bitcoin has had established uh, uh, success against you know several uh, uh, technical, technological, and social attacks. We saw Silk Road come and go. Uh, we saw uh, the, the the government uh, auctioning, seizing, and then auctioning uh, uh, bitcoins. We saw satellites uh, get launched into space 
in Series A. Uh, really, really a great series. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, uh, along a similar trend, uh, you had uh, between your pre-money valuation and your post-money valuation, you saw a 10x rise uh, over the over the investment round uh, with a cash in amount of around 16.1 billion dollars. Uh, uh, so you had a, a more than more than 10x increase uh, in price and uh, just under 100x increase in hash rate. So still growing very seriously and by by orders of magnitude. So uh, even though it was a far safer product, it was still uh, extremely uh, high risk of failure with price volatility, uh, with with 40% swings in a few days uh, possible and and witnessed. Uh, just as as recently as uh, as uh, Black Friday, March the thirteenth, March the twelfth in the U.S., uh, Bitcoin dropping fifty uh, percent in a in a forty eight hour period, and you know, lo and behold, uh, you know, uh, three months later, uh, price has has gone up two hundred and fifty percent. So still extreme uh, volatility. Uh, the earliest developers and speculators are still the main equity holders, but but only just barely. And uh, we have started to to enter really the redistribution phase uh, through things like the auto DCA movement. Uh, one of the most important things that happened during this series, which really uh, brought uh, Bitcoin to the main stage, which sort of happened behind uh, behind the scenes and without uh, too much media fanfare, was the user activated soft fork. Uh, where Bitcoin proved uh, that it was truly the money of the people and uh, could not be co-opted uh, by uh, you know neither the the Bitcoin establishment uh, nor nor any other establishment for that matter. Uh, plug and play nodes came onto the scene. The Lightning Network came onto the scene. Uh, you know the 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 UI and UX improved dramatically, uh, but you know it's still not good. Uh, you know Lightning, for example, not ready uh, for mainstream. Uh, but again, this is this is still Series A, and things are still uh, being built. So uh, as time moves forward, number go up, we'll move forward on all of these things. So uh, uh, you know, an, an example of a, of a of a coming update will be you know Schnorr signatures. Schnorr signatures will you know allow uh, you know a couple more transactions per second. So if number go up on transactions per second, number go up. Uh, on price, number go up on users, uh, all of that incentivizes more development and the number go up loop just uh, goes on and on. Uh, importantly, the age of auto DCA and Bitcoin only has commenced during series A and will be carried on forward through series B. And uh, I'll be dwelling on auto DCA quite a bit in the, in the, in the rest of the presentation. So uh, for me, nothing, uh, uh, matters in Bitcoin except uh, uh, auto DCA, uh, and that is because auto DCA is the is the fuel uh, behind uh, NGU technology. Uh, and if price appreciation stalls out, uh, everything uh, stalls out. So uh, so uh, by auto DCA, which is automatic buying of Bitcoin on an extremely regular basis, whether that's daily or weekly, uh, is a sort of an ideological stand against the fiat system by uh, by forcing yourself to save uh, money in this uh, in this new ecosystem and also prop up the price floor and uh, and effectively a uh, force perpetual number go up in a in a self-fulfilling prophecy so uh, so the power of the of the of the auto dca in a uh, during series a to to keep the price at $10,000 only 6.57 billion per year was required to hold the price and if you think about bitcoin as a as a startup company uh, and looking at the valuation it experienced during uh, series a you could say that a you know a 5 to to 6 billion dollar per year uh, investment inflow into bitcoin for the level of utility it provided uh, was probably warranted and you should see this level of uh, inv of yearly investment uh, increase as utility increases as we go on through the series uh, so that just translates to a very, very small fraction of people uh, saving $10 a day in Bitcoin to hold a price of $10,000. All right, so I'm running out of time, so I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll get through these next ones uh, uh, quite quickly. So Series B, this is this is where we are now. So uh, Series B is is the scale round. 
So uh, effectively, money that goes in during this phase will be focused on on scaling uh, the, the the business as quickly and uh, and effectively as possible. Or rather, sorry, it's uh, the the building phase. C is the is the scaling phase. I'm, uh, I apologize. So so the the build phase. So all remaining things that that need to be built out in Bitcoin from a from a usability. Uh, and uh, and privacy uh, uh, point of view will most likely happen during this next four year period. So having multi-sig that's usable by my mum, uh, having effectively uh, putting myself in my mum's shoes, uh, by the end of this four years, my mum should be able uh, to seamlessly be a Bitcoiner. Uh, and uh, she will because she must. And, and I believe uh, four years is a very, very long time in Bitcoin and there will be enough uh, uh, investment money and number go up uh, uh, that go in during these next four years that should, uh, that should really bring uh, Bitcoin into the, into the point where it is ready for prime time. So uh, with, uh, uh, you know, I, I was alluding to Schnorr signatures uh, uh, earlier. That's, you know, one of many protocol improvements uh, that will come. These, uh, these improvements will allow things like uh, massively multi-sig uh, addresses that will help, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with institutions and institutional funds. If uh, you increase utility for institutions, number go up and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you'll have... Uh, a lot more vertical and horizontal integration amongst uh, Bitcoin companies, and you'll see, uh, uh, you know, uh, full stack companies uh, develop. So, for example, mining companies that produce their own hardware, uh, produce their own energy, produce their own wallets, have their own exchange attached, uh, and so on, as a sort of all-in-one uh, solution. And uh, as the series, as the as Bitcoin grows more mature, you need less and less adults. Uh, putting in less and less money per day to hold a higher and higher floor. So series C, the scale series. This uh, this uh, 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 series effectively uh, is the point where Bitcoin is completely ready for, 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 for prime time and the masses. It's just that nobody knows about it yet. Uh, inflation here is lower than gold. Uh, risk is uh, is far lower. And it's basically here now an exercise of uh, of getting the product out to the people through increased marketing uh, and evangelism. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, a lot of uh, early holders are quite wealthy and spending a bit of money uh, on on marketing. Although their 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 Bitcoin stash will slightly uh, uh, reduce, the Bitcoin pie will become much larger. Uh, uh, you know, uh, allowing them uh, to to compensate for their loss in Bitcoin via increase uh, in wealth. Uh, more, more vertical and horizontal integration uh, will, uh, will be seen here and, and there will be uh, more improvements in, in uh, user experience and, and user interface. Uh, uh, at this point, as, as Gigi was mentioning, uh, Bitcoin will, will start to disappear and be uh, abstracted. Uh, again, through the auto DCA army, if you see 1% of adults saving just $2.70 a day at this point uh, would uh, would leave a price, uh, a Bitcoin price of $300,000. So uh, through the through the halvings uh, uh, and uh, and the increase of utility, the number just goes up and up uh, relentlessly. And you'll see these numbers almost shadow uh, Plan B's stock to flow model. Uh, finally, at IPO, Bitcoin's ready for prime time extremely low uh, risk of failure. Uh, the, the wealth distribution has, uh, is well and truly underway and, uh, and circular self-relying uh, uh, economies uh, have formed. Uh, Bitcoin has, has effectively uh, disappeared and, uh, and very, very few people uh, saving $5 a day uh, gives you your million dollar, million dollar Bitcoin at only 100 billion a year of investment flows which by uh, 2030 will be uh, will really be nothing in the scheme of things. Uh, it then moves on to blue chip status, like like you know, like a JP Morgan uh, level uh, company, where it's effectively a, a risk risk free asset, low volatility, uh, 
uh, innovation is incremental at that point and uh, and uh, the wealth distribution is ongoing. So uh, as you can see, a, a DCA army it could it could see a six million dollar coin uh, at that point with with very with very little investment. So uh, not many people have to be involved to see Bitcoin absolutely take over the world. So uh, in terms of the uh, the the investment decision, uh, it's almost impossible for a Bitcoin startup to outperform Bitcoin if you're thinking of investing in a Bitcoin startup. Uh, but Bitcoin only performs well if you have a uh, uh, if you have an increase in core functionality so uh it's a it's a bit of a catch-22 you have to invest in startups uh, to improve bitcoin to make bitcoin number go up so uh if you're going to insist on investing in a startup uh you should uh, also hedge uh, by taking a long position uh in bitcoin too 